Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see all you and half your face anyway, the half that's, uh, you know, not covered up with the mask. It's good to see you. <laughs> uh, it's awesome to be in the presence of God, isn't it? Today, we're just going to just jump right in. We kind of have a special service we have here uh, this afternoon, and we're glad that you guys are here with us. Uh, but before we get to that, I just want to open the Bible a little bit, talk through the Bible a little bit, and just look at who God is and some of his plans throughout history. If you guys want to say something after me, say this here. Say after me, God builds, God has a plan, and God's plan involves people. Let's do that again. God builds, God has a plan, God's plan involves people. You think about the story of Noah building the ark. God had a plan. And God said to Noah, he said, build. Build an ark. Build an ark. And God gave him the plan. It's supposed to be this many meters. It's supposed to be made out of this kind of wood. It's supposed to be lined with uh, this uh, uh, mud that they used in order to make it waterproof. And then Noah built it. God, Noah built after God's plan. Think about it when the Israelites were in the wilderness. God met with Moses and said, Moses, build. Build a tabernacle. Build a tent for the presence of God so the people of God can come and meet with God and bring their sacrifices. And God had a clear plan. He said, it's supposed to be this many meters, supposed to be made out of this kind of wood, supposed to be covered with these uh, materials, and supposed to have this many rooms. God gave the plan. So God builds. Say it again. God builds. God has a plan. God's plan involves people. Fast forward to the New Testament. Jesus said, I will build my church. I will build my church. What we see here, this is not the plan of man. This is God's plan. Jesus said, I will build my church. God builds, God has a plan, and God's plan involves people. Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 18, he says, I say to you, Peter, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. This is Jesus building. God's building. He has, he has a plan for what he builds, and his plan involves people. And thank God that he partners with people. He partnered with Noah. He partnered with Moses. He's partnering with us today and inviting us to be people that build according to his plan and according to the plan that he sets. Let me read a couple of verses in Acts chapter, one in Acts chapter 14 and then one in Titus chapter 1. In Acts chapter 14, it's talking about Paul and Barnabas. Acts chapter 14, verse 23 says, So when they, they talking about Paul and Barnabas, had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So they appointed elders in every church. So they went to all the churches that they planted, that they started, and they put these elders in. In Titus chapter 1, it says, For this reason, this is Paul again talking to Titus, Titus chapter 1, verse 5, For this reason I left you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. God's plan for the church involves a group of people in every church called elders. And these elders are the spiritual leaders of the church. They are appointed by the Holy Spirit. They are chosen by God to lead in the church. And God's plan involves this group of people. 
The Bible talks about some of the qualifications or some of the characteristics of an elder. And we don't have time to look at every single one of them, but I just want to look at a few of them. Um, and if you want to go back and study more about what an elder is in the Bible, in God's plan, take a look in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, Titus chapter 1, also Acts chapter 20 has more about elders as well. But this is what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of an elder, he desires a good work. An elder then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, and able to teach. Then uh, in verses 3, 4, and 5, there's more uh, qualifications in there, but there's a list of what God says. This is what an elder in a church looks like. Continues in Titus chapter 1, verse 9. It says that they hold fast the faithful word as they have been taught, that they may be able both to exhort and convict those who contradict. So we see that an elder is someone who knows the word of God, who's studied the word of God, who's given their life to the word of God and stands on the word of God with all of their life. Through some of the stories in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, we see many of the things that elders in the Bible did. They led with, with unity in the same spirit. There's a story about elders in the Old Testament. In Numbers chapter 11, they led with unity in the same spirit. They bore the burden of the people. This is talking about the elders that served with Moses. So they bore the burden of the people so that Moses didn't have to bear it alone. They were humble before God. The elders were responsible to teach the next generation. In the New Testament, we see that elders, once again, we see elders were appointed in every church. Elders were involved in determining matters of belief and practice in the church. So all of the things that we teach and believe, the elders talk about it. They, they form the doctrine based on the word of God, based on prayer and, and understanding the word of God. Elders are, are involved in sending men and ministries, uh, uh, people in ministries from their churches, sending them out to new places. Elders lay hands on people, pray for them, impart, imparting spiritual gifts. Elders preach and teach. Elders lay hands. In James chapter 5, verse 14, elders are to lay hands on sick people, anoint them with oil, and pray for their healing. These are some of the things that elders in churches do. And what we want to do today is we want to introduce, for those of you that don't know who the elders of New Life Fellowship are, we want you guys to be familiar with them because the elders' main responsibility is for caring for the spiritual well-being of the church. And the church is not, you know, the, the, the lights and the building and the walls and the ceiling, but the, light, but the church is people. And the elders are responsible for the spiritual well-being of the people in the church. And so that's what we take as our main responsibility. And as such, there's responsibilities for you as well as we partner together as people who are going forward, who are on this journey with, with Jesus. The Bible says you can do three things for the elders. 1 Timothy 5.17 says, Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially those who labor in, wor in word and doctrine. Hebrews 13 says, Obey those who rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give an account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. And in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Paul says to the church there, he says, Brethren, pray for us. He says, pray for us. And so, as elders, we ask you, pray for us. Things that you can do towards the elders, honor them, submit to them, and pray for them. So what I want to do today is I want to call our elders up. Um, let's have uh, Pastor Samadhi come on up. Everybody give a hand to Pastor Samadhi. Pastor Samadhi is our lead pastor. 
He's the lead pastor of New Life Fellowship, and he's also an elder. The lead pastor is always an elder in the church. Uh, we'd like to have Brother uh, Sota come on up. All right, yeah. Brother Sota has been a Christian here in New Life for a long time. He's a leader, spiritually caring, uh, has great relationships with our uh, provincial churches. Brother Mara, come on up. And Leah, come on up as well. Brother Mara and Leah, an awesome couple in God's house, committed to the house of God, faithful servants. Brother St. Paul Makara, come on up, please. Another long-standing member, leader in our house. And Brother Laxo P, come on up as well. All right, give these guys a hand, all of them. And myself, I am also one of the elders uh, in this great group as well. I'm honored to be part of uh, this group. So these are the elders of New Life Fellowship. We consider it an honor and a privilege and something very, very sacred from God that he has asked us to be the lead, the, the team that is spiritually leading New Life Fellowship. It's not something that we take lightly. It's not something that we think, oh, it's you know just another thing to do. No, this is something that we value. It is something that is sacred to us. And in all of our times that we meet together, talk together, discuss together, we hold it in high regard. And we pray, pray for you, pray for God's wisdom for us, that God would use us to be the people that he's using to build New Life Fellowship here in Phnom Penh. So we would ask you guys, would you guys all stand up with us? Please stand. And just like Paul asked the church in Thessal uh, Thessalonica, please pray for us right now. We'd like to ask you guys, lift up your voice and please pray for us. Can you do that? All right, let's uh, lift up our voices. And please pray for this great group. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 that you have chosen to work through people and build through people. And God, not just this group here, but so many other people who faithfully serve at New Life. Thank you, God, for choosing us to be a part of what you're building here in Phnom Penh, in Cambodia, in this region, around the world, oh God. Lord, we thank you. We consider it a privilege to partner together with Jesus Christ, who is building his church. That the gates of hell will not prevail against our church. This is your promise, oh God. And we stand together with you, oh God. God, we ask of you. Lord, we ask you, anoint us. Fill us with your spirit, spirit of unity, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of faith and proclamation to declare your word to the city, to this country, to the world. God, we thank you for the gifts and the talents in each one of us, oh God. And we say, here we are, God. Here we are, use us. Thank you, God, so much that you are here with us and that you have called us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys, all right. All right, say it together again with me. God builds, God has a plan, God uses people to be somebody who God uses to build his church. Amen. All right. That's it for today. But I want to encourage you guys, if you have tithes and offerings, 
We have places to put them here on the right and the left and also out in the lobby. We also continually have small groups. If you need a small group, get in a small group. And we'll see you guys next week. God bless you all. Amen. Have a great week.